There's no shortage of run and gun style gaming on the Sega Genesis. Right from the beginning you had options that covered just about everything you could want. But if there's one thing I really came to appreciate about Sega during the 90s, they weren't afraid to try something radically new in terms of gameplay. You see it in much of their software at the time. From swimming around the creepy underwater world of Echo to the grappling mayhem of Ristar, Sega really tried to give us unique experiences beyond jumping on enemies' heads. In 1993, Sega would publish Ranger X, a product by a small group of developers and designers that had previously been with Wolf Team, now calling themselves Gao Entertainment. And what a product it was! While the core game had you repelling an enemy invasion force by shooting down bad guys, it also had a ton of strategy and how your weapons are used. This was no ordinary Contra ripoff. In this episode, we are going to take a look at Ranger X and see what all the fuss was about. Is it worth your time? Let's find out. The story here is pretty standard stuff as far as 16-bit tales go. Homeworld is under attack by the Rahuna, who wish to bring the Free Galactic Systems Council under their rule. The initial attack was massive and Homeworld suffered mightily for being unprepared. The second wave is about to start and it's your job to help stop the enemy invaders. Thankfully, you happen to have a number of weapons at your disposal. You are gifted with a suit of armor and a courier unit in battle, both of which can be controlled independently if you have a six-button arcade pad. And there starts the heart of what makes Ranger X so special. Not only are you controlling your robot, but also your vehicle. This takes some time getting used to and is not at all intuitive upon first inspection. The X and Z buttons move your courier, named Indra, left and right, and you have a number of options from there to use it further. You can dock with Indra and fight as one unit, or leave it as supporting fire. When you're docked, Indra's shield will protect you, saving your own. The thing is, controlling both can be overwhelming at first, and in the tougher areas, can get you killed pretty easily. But even without Indra, you have a number of weapons and abilities you can use. Shooting your normal gun requires you to focus on the A and C buttons. A shoots left, C shoots to the right. Again, this does take some getting used to. Your special attacks range from flamethrowers to seeker rockets, and you have a jetpack that allows you to get around the play area effectively. That jetpack takes some getting used to as well, because you don't have a button for it. Instead, you press up whenever you want to engage it. This tends to be awkward in the beginning, and you will have a tendency to over and under compensate, leaving you prone to damage. Your heads up display is quite busy, giving you a meter for your jetpack use, showing your special weapon, number of enemies remaining, your life gauge, and your weapon's power meter. That weapon's power meter is pretty important because once it runs down, you can only recharge it by either direct sunlight or a direct power source. On the open stages, this is a non-issue, but in the darker areas, you'll need to find out what can recharge you. Sometimes it's machinery, and sometimes you can blow holes in rock formations to let light in. Along with Indra, some stages have EOS, a flying vehicle that you can take advantage of. It provides air support as you assault ground units, essentially making you a one-man army. While the gameplay does take some time to come to terms with, the graphics provide immediate satisfaction. It came on an 8 megabit cartridge loaded with programming wizardry. Wireframe mission briefings start the festivities, which lead straight into beautifully animated sprites, awesome parallax and line scrolling effects in the backgrounds, and just a general sense of scale and attention to detail that really sets it apart. On stage one, you see a city being attacked in the distance, cannons blasting in and smoke billowing from its towers. 
There are backgrounds that legit look like they are made of 3D polygons, and there's other cool areas like a forest that is dark below the tree line and bright and sunny when you fly above. And none of that includes the killer boss encounters, which either fill up a huge portion of the screen or have some wicked scrolling effect in place that really adds to the presentation. There's also a fair bit of pseudo sprite scaling in place on objects in the environment. There's reflections on buildings at night, transparencies, more backgrounds that look 3D, and more giant boss battles. Ranger X is a tour de force of visual effects on the Genesis. So impressive, I'd easily say it rivals the best from Treasure, which is no small claim. It's Genesis programming at its best, and a great showpiece for the hardware. The group that worked on the sound and music for this game also worked on projects like Lunar for the Sega CD, Advanced Buster Hawk Glaylancer, The Steel Empire, Wings of War, and Crusader of Sinti. So in a word, what you will listen to here is fairly impressive stuff. The variety is really nice, containing tracks that are slow to start and tracks that are upbeat from the moment they begin. The bass is excellent, so if you are hooked up to a decent set of speakers, let your geek flag fly high. As much as I want to praise Ranger X, there are some issues that I feel will affect a great many of you. The stiff control is often unforgiving. Enemies are fast and their attacks relentless, often leaving you in a position to soak up damage, particularly in the tighter stages. There's also a floatiness to using the jetpack that kind of leaves you hanging in the air too long, opening you up to ample damage there as well. It's all a balancing act that makes things frustrating at first, and if you aren't good at these types of games, can be very off-putting. In that case, I highly recommend that you play on easy the first time through. There's less enemies to contend with, and you take less damage, which gives you more time to adjust to the movement of your robot, the way he attacks, and his support vehicles. You cannot get the real ending this way, but it does give you a leg up on the normal mode once you attempt it. There's also life replenishment bases in some stages, so don't be afraid to backtrack and use them to your advantage. To that end, I honestly feel the positives far outweigh the negatives in this one. Once you do become proficient with the control, you can kick some serious ass. The graphics and sound play out an adventure well worth taking, and if you give it a chance, I'm confident this will rank right up there with the likes of Gunstar Heroes in the Genesis Library. If you've never played it, you're in for one heck of a treat. Ranger X released in North America, Europe, and Brazil, while it was under the name X Ranza in Asian territories. The US and PAL editions use a slightly different set of colors on the highest difficulty, of which there are four, Easy, Normal, Hard, and Heavy. The Japanese version just has Easy and Hard. The company that developed it, Gao Entertainment, was sold to Nextech after this game's release, who absorbed its staff, properties, and the projects that they were working on. At the time of their purchase, Gao Entertainment had been developing none other than Crusader of Sinti, which bore only the Next Tech name when it was finally released. 
Ranger X here remains the lone title ever developed under Gal Entertainment's name, one of the many lasting legacies of the original Wolf Team. It was games like this that made me love my Genesis. So different, so unique, and you couldn't play it anywhere else. If you've tried Ranger X before and it turned you off, I do advise you give it another try. That gameplay can be tough to wrap your head around at first, but there is a method to its madness. Once you get the hang of moving Indra, controlling your boosters, and using different buttons to fire in different directions, this is a hell of a good action game. And of course, those graphics and special effects really stand out and remain impressive all these years later. I would love to see this game get a modern sequel or remake. Hell, I'd even love to see Retrobit add it to their reissue list so all the folks that missed it back then could get in on this unique adventure. It's a challenge well worth taking. I'm Sigalord X, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.